Dusk and Elliot Wood find themselves inside their new home. A farmhouse abandoned by its owners. Dust cakes the floor, yet all the windows and doors are intact. It would seem that this farm has been spared by the cataclysm so far. It is a place that the woods can put down their roots, a place that they can grow. And having unloaded her pack of her burdens, Dusk is looking forward to a long and peaceful sleep. Come the dawn, she will have to explore the farm further with her brother, seeking out any foes that may cause them trouble in the long run. And then comes fortification, barricading the windows, limiting the potential points of entry. And then they can start to study, start to learn and train. They have a destination far to the east, but for them to reach that, they'll need to be oh so well prepared. This place, this farm, it may just give them that yet. Kia ora, Legionnaires, Rikon here, and welcome back to Cataclysm Dark Days Ahead. No hope. Where I have done a little bit of organization, just placing some of our items away for now. We're going to be keeping our excess guns and ammunition in the pantry here for now. It's going to be our little gun room, so we can close that off for the time being. And now, we need to rest. We need to get some sleep because Dusk is dead tired, and no doubt Elliot isn't that far behind him. All of our excess clothes and packs are going to be hanging over here on this coat rack. And yeah, we need to try and figure out whose room is going to be whose, but let's not kid ourselves. So far, these two have always been sleeping close by to one another. More than likely one being on lookout while the other sleeps, and no doubt that'll be the same tonight. Elliot, would you please close that door behind you, you strange, strange man. I say that because he kind of just drifts in here. With that sinister cloak on, we can't really see his leg tentacles, so he just kind of glides along the ground. He really does have a full-on Plague Doctor look going on at the moment. Yeah, because it's a plague robe. And I believe it does kind of have the hood as well that kind of goes along with it. And with his barky beak, he would look like a strange dryad Plague Doctor. Quite the look, Elliot. Now, are we going to be able to get to sleep right away? I hope so, Dusk. We are going to keep the sword in hand. You know what? Overnight, let's just drop that hiking backpack on the ground. Perhaps you can just rest your head against it. She does have a pillow here. All right, Dusk, time to sleep. And good morning. Elliot still sleeps, yet Dusk awakes. And she awakes with some good news. A positive mutation for Dusk. Wild. Her fleet-footed trait turned into Roadrunner. Dusk's legs are extremely limber and fast-moving. She moves 30% faster on flat surfaces. That is wild for staying away from our enemies. Now, I'd really like to get back into archery over time, and I think that would make a massive difference when it comes to keeping our enemies at bay. Now, unfortunately, we are still tired at the moment, so we could probably try and go back to sleep. In saying that, though, it would be nice to make use of the daylight, even if it is just a little bit. And I would feel relatively comfortable with Dusk going out and exploring around here by herself. We want to at least make it up towards the horse stable. I'm just having a look through the rest of the pastures here, trying to see if there are any other structures. Not over this way, but I think there might be a coop, possibly? No, I could be wrong. There is a horse stable, though, just to the north of us. And all of this here is paddocks as well. And then, of course, we have the silo over towards the side here. Okay, all right, so we're going to be heading up in the direction of the horse stable. And we also want to have a look at that car that was out the front of the property. Elliot, just stay here for now and sleep. You need that extra sleep. Doesn't look like we have any water with us at the moment, but we do have some purification tablets. So let's just go into the loo. Oh, there's some calcium tablets in the sink there. Oh, there is no, there is no water here. Not in that cistern. Okay, interesting. Well, we may, we may actually have a well somewhere on the property, so we'll try and keep our eyes peeled for that. All right, out into the light we go. Now we probably are going to have some ill effects of being out in the sun with dusk. We could try and get the umbrella, but honestly, I think we just go for it. And that aphid, I'm probably going to try and see if we can kill right away, just because it's going to be, it could be a bit of a problem otherwise. We don't want a lot of them to be around, especially if we are going to be growing things eventually. And hey, that's potential meat. Um, we're actually going to drag that over towards the front door 
because eventually it'd be nice to process that and see if we can get something out of it. It may have toxic meat because it is a giant creature, but we'll see it. Oh, about the cars. I have been informed that sometimes if there is junk on the seat, it can make it a little bit difficult for us to get into. So this, uh, this hatchback, unfortunately, is completely destroyed. There is not much that we can do about that. But we can get some first aid kit stuff from this, so we are going to do that. Let's just take that out of there as well. And you know what? We'll take some duct tape and we'll take the battery out of that heavy duty flashlight. There is a hand pump there as well, which could be handy. And okay, locked, locked door. We didn't get you open, did we? No. Well, I wouldn't mind trying to uh, lockpick it rather than destroy it because then we can leave the door intact. We'll just have to come back to that at some point. For now though, oh, the sunlight is burning our mouth. Well, that probably means that we have decent coverage across most of our body. Of course, we do need to leave Dusk's mouth clear so that she can make use of those fangs. And that's a strange um, void, pseudo terrain. This should never actually show up. It's a pseudo terrain. Okay, I'm not gonna step on that, but the way that I can kind of see that is almost like a void out there in the field. Um, yeah, maybe we don't interact with that. Well, we could. Oh, I'm already seeing a horse. That's good, up at the up at the horse stable. So this newspaper page, let's just have a look. You can't beat them. Riots continue to rage across the country, maybe the world. Here in our newsroom, we've taken a poll. It's agreed, if you can't beat them, join them. This will be our last issue. We're going out there to show the government exactly what we think of their lib-wristed failures. Well, okay, let's take that newspaper page and we're gonna try and just drop it onto the pseudo-terrain and see if it breaks the game. Newspaper page, okay. It kind of just stays there in the void. We'll leave that for now. Okay, that horse seems to be okay. There's nothing around the field right now. Nothing's broken through the fences. Two horses we are seeing now. Where is our second horse? It's around here somewhere. Uh, no, we're just seeing the one. Okay, nice big field over this way as well. All right. So let's see if we can maybe find some saddles in here and some other bits of equipment. What do we got? A salt lick. How nice. And over here, large cattle fodder bundle. So we should be able to take those apart and potentially tame the horse over there. We've got a pocket watch. How nifty. Let's actually just close these curtains so this area stays a little bit uh, more secluded. Rain and tackle. Excellent. And jockey skull cap, which the protection on that is really good. It'd be nice to be able to give something like that to Elliot, but it's rigid and he's got rigid skin, so he's not going to be able to wear it, no. So let's not worry about that. I do just wanna check that against our current riding helmet just to see how it's gonna stack up. Honestly, it's, uh, it's the same. It is exactly the same. The padding is the same on the crown, forehead. Um, the skull cap's a little lighter. I wouldn't have thought that the protection would be the same. Although, oh, this is a small peak to protect from glare. Our riding helmet does. So yeah, I mean, we'll stick with that for now. Okay, let's see what else we got here. Two more salt licks and it looks like we can climb up. Hey, okay. Well, this horse should be a lot easier for us to try and get to. Yeah, let's just clamber up here and see what we got. Lots of uh, big old bundles of hay. And because we are a level higher, oh well, we I guess we're a level higher on the other house. There isn't much else for us to see at this point. We do have the radio tower kind of close by though. So if we do want more sight, we know where to go. So we don't have a saddle still. We've got the rain and tackle, but no saddle. Oh, and the other thing as well, with horses, we need to make sure that we keep pretty lightweight in general. If we're carrying too much, we're just not gonna get any movement out of them. So let's see, can we disassemble this bundle that's over here? Yes, it looks like we can. Okay, all right, let's take that apart. Put the long sword away. And there we have 36 cattle fodder. We should only need the one. Let's go pick that up. Let's see if we can approach the horse here. And let's activate the cattle fodder. <laughs> the horse seems to like dusk. She pats it slightly on the side of its head and feeds that cattle fodder to it. It eats gladly. It's seemingly been in the stall for a while. Milk horse. Let's not do that right now. Oh, it is It is famished. The horse is famished. Okay. Uh, oh, right. We need survival skill four to be able to ride without a saddle. And I am assuming the rain and tackle would probably be useful when we're using the, the vehicles, I think. Unless it's equipping it with armor. No. Yeah, and you can attach 
other bits and pieces to it. Okay, well, that's not going to help us right this second then. We will need a saddle of some kind. Unfortunately, there is no saddle here. I do wonder if we can continue to try and feed you some of this fodder. So we're just going to grab a few more pieces of that. Yeah, no, no direct way to feed you. Unless, of course, maybe we just keep on feeding you this way. Horse doesn't want that kind of food. Okay, so it isn't hungry. Not right now. So how far are we from survival four? <laughs> we got survival one. Looking at our tablet PC and the stored books that we have on there, we don't have anything that can really help us with survival yet. We have survival five up the top, but nothing that's going to help us get that far along. So the next thing that we'd need to try and do then is make a saddle, which we don't know how to do. That's probably going to be working our way up through fabrication. Let's just have a look at the rain and tackle. It's probably going to be under vehicle parts. Yeah, vehicle parts. So that won't help us right now. A set of leather bindings to control a mountable creature. So we could try and attach the horses to a cart, potentially. I think we'll still try and tame the other horse and maybe try and get it over here into the stable, just so it's a little less visible. And you know what, we might try and bring them both just into this little center section here, if possible. Okay, uh, let's crack open that gate, approach the horse here. Come on, it's okay. And let's feed that to you. Excellent, okay. Now I don't know if you're just going to follow me or if you're just gonna be friendly. I think you might just be friendly for now, so you're not gonna directly follow us. Okay, all right, I suppose we know now, don't we? Let's just close this other gate just to make things a little easier. Um, can I try and get you to head out this way? Not easily, but I guess we'll give you the option. Let's go take maybe five more pieces of cattle fodder because we can always come back for more. And as for the rain and tackle, we'll probably just leave it down here because we aren't going to need that right this second. And then we're just going to head on outside. Yeah, just salt licks, huh? Okay, all right, so we have seen the horse and stable. We're catching a lost bug out bag. That sounds good. There is also a horde that we've spotted up to the northwest, so we'll need to be wary of that, but I wouldn't mind having a look at the bug out bag and also just making sure that there isn't anything else lurking around here. Ah, the horse that's up here. Hello, horse. Well, I suppose we could try and get you on our side as well, couldn't we? Let's clamber on over and look at feeding you that cattle fodder. There we go. You like us too. The horse seems full now. Oh, hunger, full. All right. I see, I see. Well, you just kind of hang out there for now. If I can get you down to the stables, we will. We'll probably just need to make a rope so that we can kind of lead them about. Let's turn on safe mode for now as we start to try and approach where this bug out bag is. Okay, I think that's it there. Sunlight's really irritating at the moment. I am liking how many fences there are around, so I feel like this is a pretty well protected place just in general. So we've got a hiking backpack here, we've got an, we have an IFAC pouch in there, some plastic bags that have some pads. Useful, very useful. Let's just take the bandages, the gauze, the tape, powder, out of that for now and I think I want to try and take the whole hiking backpack because that's something that we can give to Elliot once he's up and about. Ooh, okay, what's that? A crater. A crater on the south. Hmm, all right. I think we're gonna try and go up towards the northeast just to see if there is anything else kind of kicking about here. Looks like we've got another little voided piece of ground. Strange. Pseudo terrain. Don't like that and oh! Oh, okay, we got some sauropods over here. Juveniles just kicking about. Okay, how about you guys just stay over there? They are not undead yet, but they may they may get that way. Maybe that's why we've got a, a horde starting to build up here, huh? We've kind of checked along all of the fields up here. No other livestock yet. Oh, we've spotted a zombie hunter. Where exactly? I have no idea. Ah, all the way up there. Okay, we've also got a... Oh, that's our fowl down there. And a pigeon. Now that fowl we haven't managed to tame yet. I would like to try if possible. And then, well, I suppose we're gonna have to try and take care of that zombie hunter. Okay, let's see. Let's just kind of keep you over there for now. Oh, and yet another horse. Okay, dry cattle fodder. Let's make you our friend. Let's open the gates so that you guys can actually end up in the same place together. There we go. And let's check on you there. There is a horse. Yes, 
Yes, indeed, that is a horse. And there we go. We've fed you some of that cattle fodder as well. Okay. Yeah, look at this farm. This is great. Now, of course, there is still more of the field over towards the southwest. We may try and check that out. Also, I didn't realize how close the house was to the road. But I suppose, yeah, it backs straight onto the road there. I mean, that's kind of handy. I think for now, we are just going to try and see if we can head up towards the hunter. And, oh, we have a dead body up there. Oh, please don't be our friend. I mean, Walter, I think, is still over there somewhere. Let's just drop our backpack for the moment. Hiking backpack. It's down. Let's check on this body here. It's a zombie body. A bruised zombie body. It's not a zombie hunter, but the hunter is around. Oh, and it's going for a horse right now. Damn. Okay, I don't think there's going to be much that we can do. No. Damn it. Okay. Well, we are going to try and take this hunter down. It's coming for us as I speak. It leaps on over towards dusk. She fakes a strike. And now is when I realize we don't actually have our longsword in our hands. That is a bit of a problem. However, dusk is still pretty deadly with just her hands, but a zombie hunter just by itself can be quite deadly. So, let's rely on our sheath instead, drawing out our army bayonet. And let's strike out Dusk, faking a few strikes. She finally gets a quick strike and then a critical. You've got this under control. Well done. Okay, let's just eat the pretzel as it is. And oh, we do still have some cattle fodder just on our body at the moment in some of our pockets. So we're going to have to climb over this fence. And unfortunately, well, I say unfortunately, I was going to say we're going to have to bash this corpse, but we could butcher it. That is a fair amount of meat that would go to waste otherwise. So I think, I think we're just gonna, we're gonna have to go for it. Unfortunately, these fields here are the closest to civilization. So they have the strongest chance of actually running into the dead. For now though, cattle fodder will go to that horse and jumping over these fences, we will go and give some cattle fodder to you too. You seem to be pretty chill, both these horses actually. Yeah. And I, su I, look, I suppose we could try and milk the horses. We don't have anything for the milk though, so okay. <laughs> well, all right then. I think we're just gonna head back down towards our backpack now. Um, oh, right. Blood over here as well. So I'm gonna say that that's probably the remains of a horse. Indeed it is. So that's a lot of, um, it's a lot of meat available to us. And also, seeing as this goose is now attacking us, we could try and yell, but I don't want to draw any extra attention our way, so we're just going to start hauling these back, and it's going to take a while. These are heavy bodies, it's a horse, and of course we are going to be doing the same with the other as well. Oh yeah, we can't actually bring them both back. There's just too much volume for us to drag both of them, so it's just going to have to be the horse and the goose for now. Let's get our backpack on our back. We see our friendly horses there, and there is another over here as well, so We'll stop dragging the dead horse, leaving it there for a moment, and we'll make you our friend. Last bit of cattle fodder, or the last that we had with us at least. And we've made it back on over towards the house now. So along with the aphid, I think we're going to bring all these things inside here. And we'll bring them on over towards the dining room table. And we're going to try and process them before we do anything else. Let's just get this closed. Oh, and I guess we'll have to drag that in separately. Okay. Let's crack open that curtain just so we can see what we are doing here. Let's butcher the goose first of all, and we should be able to do a full butchery of the goose just because it is a smaller creature. And I suppose we could also look at doing the same to the aphid. Yeah, lots of mutant things, but it does give us some uh, strange stuff like endochitin. Right, the horse. I doubt we're going to be able to do a full butchery. No, we need to be able to suspend it. So we'd need to have a butcher's rack of some kind. So with a survival skill of three, we would be able to try and make a butchering rack, but we're not at that level yet. So for now, it is just going to have to be a quick butchery, which is still going to net us a fair amount of meat, I think. We failed to harvest the horse skull and the large stomach, but we are looking at 125 chunks of meat there, which is massive. There's a lot of raw hide here as well, and we probably also have a considerable amount of fat. 33 chunks of fat. Okay, so if we could process some of that hide, that would be ideal. So for us to make a cured hide, we need to have salt water of some kind, or just straight up salt. 
It's frustrating because I've seen salt in so many places now, but we don't have it at the moment. We do have saline solution. Yeah, it is a little unfortunate. Just so much of this meat we're not going to be able to make full use of. But I would, I would like to try and find a use for all those hides. I mean, hey, we can cure two to start with. We will get that done. Obviously, if we're wanting to have some uh, <laughs> calories, we can always just have some of that fat there. Now, we do have a little cooker that we've got tucked away in a cupboard at the moment. But I'm just trying to think about how we can get a fair amount of salt or salt water easily. We do have a swamp down here. Now, swamps generally in Cataclysm are quite dangerous, even more so with the dinosaur mod. Dinos seem to really like hanging out around water and there's a large water source just here and of course over there to the west in the form of that river. Now there are many homes in which we'd be able to find no doubt lots of salt. So if we were to use salt we'd need to have about 82 pieces of salt or 41 things of salt water. I've seen a lot of seasoned salt. I don't remember seeing too much just regular salt. I think if we were to head back up in the direction of Foxborough, we'd probably be able to find some. We did a pretty good job at clearing much of that town. So I think what we might try and do is go there in the evening. It's nearly midday at the moment. If we go to sleep with dusk, we should be good. The question is how long is the hide going to last before it's uh, no good? Shelf life of a day. So we'd have to be pretty quick with this. Obviously the chunks of meat, it's kind of the same deal. It's gonna perish really quickly. The chunks of fat can last for about a week so that will still give us a fair amount of food. And of course the bone and other things are still gonna be useful for us a long way down the line. But if we didn't butcher this creature now, it would have gone to waste regardless. So I think for the moment, we will still try to cook up a little bit of meat. So I'm going to try and drag some of that down with us. Actually, you know what? We'll probably take all of the meat, really, just down towards the kitchen. <laughs> Look at that. We're already dead tired. My gosh. Okay, so let's get some of that food cooked up. I think we are just going to go for the straight up cooked meat. And we'll spend an hour cooking up some of that. Ah, <laughs> we need more charges. Looks like we can get eight done. There we are. So we're just gonna knock that back right away with Dusk. Still feeling rather thirsty, which is unfortunate. We didn't find any water out there. So setting up a water catch, I think is going to be necessary for us. For now though, as I said, we are gonna try and see if we can get a little bit of sleep before the evening rolls around. Elliot, you're still asleep. All right, let's join him. Okay, well, we wake up at 10.30 p.m. Our alarm is going off and Elliot really needs some water. So does Dusk and unfortunately for Elliot, over the evening, his very poor mana regeneration has turned into abysmal mana regeneration. So mana will be slow coming for Elliot. It could be worse, it could be worse, but yes, we need to get you some water, don't we? And did we check the bathroom upstairs? I don't think we did, but yeah, we're not finding any water in these loos here. I will check the other one as well, just to be certain. Yep, it's the same deal. Okay, well, that is unfortunate. Now, Elliot, we do have a backpack for you. You've got your large tactical backpack. Honestly, that might be better than the hiking backpack that we got for you. So for now, let's just leave it up here. Oh, and Dusk, let's wield your longsword before I forget about it. Putting the bayonet back into your sheath. Wonderful. Okay, so first things first, water is going to be our top priority. And I do need to remember that Dusk is going to be so much faster than Elliot. She's a roadrunner. And well, he is, he has tentacles. Now, it's pretty much a straight shot back up in the direction of Walter. We can probably check on him, make sure that he's still doing okay before we try and head back into some of these homes here. See if we can find some salt, see if we can gather up some water. And of course, wouldn't you know it, it's a foggy night. What's new? Now, last time we saw Walter, oh, yep. <laughs> he was right here and he is still just hanging out. The pretty cat man. <laughs> okay, now we're gonna go for the gun basement house, first of all. Just wanted to check out this zombie soldier here. Uh, we're good. Yeah, we know the space of this one, so we'll go through it before anything else. And there is water in these toilets here. Our landmines are up there as well. I may want to collect those. Uh, but for now though, let's go get some water. We're going to 
pour that into our canteen and let's go and purify that now. Dusk, go and knock back that nice clean water. Okay, I'm going to do the same thing for Elliot as well. So I think we should just be able to trade him without too much trouble. But we'll fill up the canteen, we'll purify it. Of course, eventually Elliot will be able to do this purification for us. There we go. And we're just going to quick save before we try and trade. Right, plastic canteen, we will take that from you, thank you. And we'll give you ours. There we go, he should be pretty happy about that. He's no doubt, yep, gonna start drinking that clean water. And we're just gonna go and fill up this yet again. Fill it up to the brim, and let's purify. Now, I will just wait and see if he drinks all of that water. I mean, we've given a little bit of time. Oh, he's only drank one of the water. Okay, so we'll just leave him with that for now. And we'll start our hunt for salt. And you know what? Maybe I will try and bring some of these back with us. I know it's bringing us close to being over encumbered, but I will drop them off should we <laughs> should we need to. Nothing in this kitchen, unfortunately. Oh, I do like this wood stove over here. Hello, zombie. Yeah. We can take care of the regular ones totally fine. Yeah, so I was checking out this wood stove. We could potentially try and haul that back to our place. What would it take us to deconstruct it? Too dark to construct. Okay, we might be able to pack that down so that we can kind of move it about. I will attempt to remember that that is there. Oh, yet another zombie. Quickly dealt with. Elliot, come on, catch up. Oh, and we have a swarming amalgamation. And we actually have a sprite view now. Ugh. All right, well, let's start slashing at that. The amalgamation quickly falls to pieces. Well done, Dusk. Let's put safe mode back on and search the house. Sprinkles. Yeah, yeah, sure. We'll take some, we'll take some sprinkles. Mashed pumpkin. Uh, we could just eat it right away. Although it's going to make us rather upset. It's it's pretty much baby food. Let's not go there just yet. Oh well, hello. Ah, uh, double hello. And that's a brute out there, I think. Yeah, I think it was a brute. Indeed it is. We've got a few dead to take care of before we can look at attacking that. The zombie brute is currently downed, so we're gonna start to slash at it. But it could very easily take a strike at us. Oh, okay, a bat wing just dived in here and Elliot managed to gouge it. Excellent work. Dusk is holding the lion right now. We're very quickly taking out all the dead heading our way. They've got to come through this broken jagged window too so there's a strong chance that they're going to get all bloodied when they head in there anyone else i mean there's a lot of noise still at the moment ah there we go hello zombie welcome to the party let's just turn on safe mode and just kind of wait things out hello hello come on over here the jagged glass is gone that does mean that we can stand in the way elliot could you uh take care of the kid thank you thank you it's always appreciated brother all right, safe mode is back on. Let's check these bodies here, and there's a, there's a lot. Okay, well, we've got a magazine. We've got some Remington ammunition. We're going to be taking all of that there. An antihistamine pill. Seasonal allergies. I did read that they had been added in. We're going to take that just in case, as well as the Taurus guide that's here. Take some caffeinated chewing gum and that long string from the broken window. Okay, all right, we're gonna continue moving on because there really ain't much else in this house here. And I think we're gonna try and check the one that is right here where, oh boy, this is where all the dead came from. So let's slash you, make our way inside the home and hope that you've left some things in here for us. Purple track pants, ever tempting, but we'll pass them up for now. I'm gonna try and keep safe mode on while we're moving around homes. Not much in the kitchen, unfortunately. They've really done a number on this place. And we've got another regular zombie down to the south here. Was having a hard time seeing us. Dusk is having an easy time taking them out in the dark here. Oh, we've got a boomer as well. Okay, well, we know how we like to try and deal with the boomers. So we will attempt to do that. Popping it against the wall, of course. And we might actually have an angle to get it here. And oh, I really, I really want to try this out. Look, Mind Hammer only has a 30% chance of failing. 13 to 41 telekinetic damage. Smash a single target or small area with a fist of telekinetic force. Can we get it through there? We don't have the range yet. Okay, what is the range on it? 
two. Okay, so it's pretty close. So let's go for a force shove then and try and slam the boomer against the wall. Seemingly we did, but we didn't get an angle that worked. We're gonna try that from over here. Or, oh, you know what? Let's try Mind Hammer from here. Oh, there we go. And something clicks about how this spell works. We gain a level, and we do feel that strange tingling sensation, which I do believe means that we're consuming more calories to empower our spells here. But hey, <laughs> a telekinetic fist slams down on the boomer. All right, and yeah, Dusk is feeling quite tired after that, and there was a considerable amount of noise, so there's a chance that we may have some things coming for us now. So, you know, if there's anything else hanging out around the town, they'll be, <laughs> they'll be heading here. An electronic gun safe, so we'd need to have a hacking tool to be able to get into that. We have not found anything of the like as of yet. Wow, okay, we had a lot of zombies die right by these stairs here. Could there be people down below? Or something worse? We'll find out soon enough. I'm gonna check the rest of the house before we do go down there though. I'm not really seeing anything though. Yep, pretty bare, pretty barren. So standing on the stairs, oh there's a tiny meat cocoon downstairs. All right, well, let's see what we've got going on. Okay, yeah, meat cocoons all over the place at the moment and a Z9. Okay, well that's something kind of regular. Let's go and try and slice the tiny meat cocoon and there's an insect sample that is left on the ground there. Okay, the Z9 is taken care of. Uh, I don't want to take a chance with these meat cocoons, so we are just going to continue to slash at these here, turning on safe mode. Okay, what is that? That's a cockroach, or at least the remains of a cockroach. Let's bash that over there as well, and we'll pick up the insect sample. Got a rotten skeletal zombie down here, a pool ball. I'm tempted to pull that away from the wall. We may need to enhance our strength to do that. Anything in the cases? No, they're all locked up though. Fruit wine and some beer. Let's take that fruit wine, thank you. Okay, yeah, let's see what else we have down here. A lot of bedrooms down below. Seemingly not much worthwhile in them. And we have spotted a cockroach somewhere. Okay, uh, let's go knock this down. So, enhance strength first of all. And let's actually just get our breath back before we try and slam this door. There we go, and that's a cockroach that we have just wrecked. 85 damage, yeah, that was the enhanced strength hitting us. That's another cockroach down. What have we got over here? Two wires, I was hoping for rope. There is some thread, we'll take that. We can put together rope easily enough, and just plunges and scales. Okay, yeah, you know what? We are going to enhance our strength again, and we're gonna drag that back out the way, just making sure that there's nothing hidden behind it. And we're gonna drop our concentration, just because I think us concentrating on spells like that for a long period of time does just drain our stamina that much more. Our stamina and also, you know, we end up spending more calories to maintain that level of strength. We've got a small warehouse, a recycle center, cosmetic store, the apartment tower, okay. And of course, more houses up here. Houses that we had been into, so I think we're gonna check those out, see if we can discover some salt. That is still my priority at the moment, so that we can get some use from the hide that we've got. Let's just make sure that Elliot stays with us, and we'll continue on. Hello, zombie runner. Where are you off to? Well, you're over towards us now. I think you must have revived semi-recently. And here's the remains of those that we uh, did some damage to. That security ballistic vest is in perfect condition. Okay, we're gonna take the purification tablets out of this one, and I'm tempted to see how good that is. So we have the riot chest guard that we're using at the moment. We also have the Kevlar vest. I'm not sure which one it would be replacing at this stage. Let's just have a look at it. So the coverage is outer, so I'd have to assume that we would be comparing it to our riot chest guard. Okay, and the security ballistic vest seems to perform better. Now the riot chest guard does protect a fair amount though. It's legs, arms, and torso. Whereas the security ballistic vest is just torso. But that would then allow us to have rigid items on other things. Because right now this is covering just a lot. And the security ballistic vest isn't considered to be rigid. Okay. Which means that we might actually just be able to put it on. Yeah, we can. All right, but it's, yeah, it's gonna conflict with that. The riot chest guard has been really good to us. 
but I think we let it go now. I think that's going to open the door for us to be able to wear a lot of other things. We could still hold on to it though. Um, I'm going to start dropping off some of those landmines now though, I think. And you know, maybe we just leave them back where they were, because at least then I'll have some kind of memory of where we've put them. Yeah, that gives us a lot more carrying capacity. Okay, new vest, Dusk. Congratulations. Well, I think we can say that this house here is definitely clear. Make our way back up towards the other now. Because we didn't fully clear this one. Oh, and there's a basement that we haven't been to. There is an insect sample there. So we'll pick that up. Let's just wait for Elliot yet again. All right, here he is. And let's head down into that basement. We have a cockroach there immediately and another insect sample. Smash the corpse, take the sample. Oh, okay. Well, there's lots of crates here and we got sandbags. A bit of a barricade going on. Where did you attack me from? I could barely see you there. Looks like they managed to actually kill a zombie. Good for you. Let's start cracking some of these crates because there is a small chance that there might be something hidden away in them. Although unfortunately in this case, that is not the case. We have yet another wood stove. And anything interesting down here? Tear gas sprayer, okay. Ooh, a, a considerable amount of drinks just kind of hanging out next to the fridge here. Well, we could probably do with some of those. We're gonna have that chocolate drink. We are feeling turgid though. All right. <laughs> we just managed to get them. There's canned pineapple here, canned fruit, brandied fruit as well as some clean water. So let's just go take all of that for now. The coffee powder, that's a lot of coffee powder. Yeah, hell yeah. Oh, okay, surprise cockroach. Thank you, Elliot, for assisting us there. Not much more than cigarettes and roach dirt down here. Average basement. All right, we'll check the rest of the place now. Pick up some super glue. But yeah, <laughs> not a lot going for it. But am I surprised? No, no. I'm beginning to think that we might just stand a better chance of collecting salt water, really. The grocery store may have some for us, and there is actually a military surplus store that we haven't checked here as well. So yeah, that could be an option. Two grocery stores. Okay, nice. That's a dispensary over there. Okay, so let's start to cautiously make our way on over. Hello there, zombie. And you know, when we find single stragglers like that, I'll gladly take them out. Ooh, a decayed zombie. Hello, hello, goodbye. We'll take your chewing gum. We should actually have some of that now because we are still feeling tired. We'll have two lots of that actually. And okay, got graffiti all over the military surplus store. So we probably won't have much in there. It's gonna be looted to high hell. Oh, hello, feral goblin. Well, right then, let's get ready to throw down. We're actually gonna head back towards Elliot, just so that we have a little bit of backup here. Let's move into a system and wow, that was a critical puncher from Elliot and then Dusk sent it reeling backwards. It was wearing a leather skirt, some socks, and it has a stylish wallet. Very cool, Goblin, very cool. All right, so yeah, two grocery stores here. I think we're gonna try and go for the northern one first. Oh, look at that. They barricaded it, a sandbag barricade. The glass is actually intact. Amazing. Okay, it looks like it's still being completely looted because this is no hope, but that's great. Elliot, hey buddy, are you still around? Come on, come on, my slow, squiddy brother. <laughs> Why well, say squiddy? He's not squiddy. We talked about this. Those are definitely tree uh, tentacles. Barren, absolutely barren, not a single thing. Damn, and obviously they barricaded all of the doors here as well. There's a small chance that we might have some things out the very back here. Let's just try and see if we can pry these planks off. So if we activate our hammer or the makeshift crowbar, yeah, there we go. We can remove them like that. And I think, I think that's just gonna lead to the outside. I mean, it's still worth us checking and this is probably just gonna be another bathroom, but again, worth checking, okay nails and planks that we don't need right now well okay then and all right you're just waiting for us huh let's see if it's the uh the same story we're gonna mark that as explored oh this is this is actually the grocery store now this one has has certainly been looked at and grape drink dirty cherry flavored condom okay all right yeah this place has been pretty messed up for a while there is a tough zombie just hanging out in here at the moment uh, it seems to be minding its own business. There's a very, very broken shopping cart. Yeah, there's some lemonade on the floor. Uh, small cardboard box. Okay, yeah, nah, this is, uh, this has been well, well looted. I'm gonna check that last little bit there. And we're gonna take out this tough zombie together. Or rather, Dusk is gonna do it by herself. That's fine. And then, 
Well, I guess we're on to the military surplus store next. And just like the other, this has been pretty well looked over it seems. As soon as we see graffiti, we know that it's been uh, seen to. Hey, hmm, do we want to grab an extra American flag just in case, you know, our gung-ho friend wants another? I think it's, uh, I think it's worth it. Hello, you. Goodbye, you. Oh, okay. Thank you for the ammunition. And that IFAC pouch, that looks pretty good to me. Let's go and take that out of there. And we should probably try and carry a tourniquet with us. Let's see if anyone's been kind and left something behind. I'm gonna say no, just a zombie. Well, okay then. It looks like the roof has actually collapsed here and we have some things growing in here. Withered plants breaking through the piles of rubble. Gorgeous. Okay, well, that's explored as well. So I think the only other things that I'm gonna to wanna to try and check now are the recycling center and this small warehouse that's here. This one's abandoned, so I can't imagine there's gonna be anything good there. Hello, crow. There's a lot of blood around here, and I don't know where that is coming from at the moment. Elliot, okay, stick close. Ah, okay, so, Really good place for us to find odds and ends. There's blades in the recycling bins, mufflers, wires. Okay, this is really good to know that this is all here. There's a freaking pressure cooker just hanging out, a foot crank. Yeah, this uh, recycling centers, don't sleep on them, especially in No Hope. Yeah, we got copper bracelets, copper pot down here as well. This, this is all really, really useful stuff. I mean, if we had a vehicle, it'd be great to just load up with everything. Cool little folding table. The things that people throw away, eh? Ooh, aluminium keg. How heavy are you going to be? Pretty heavy. We're already kind of a little bit overweight at the moment, but I think we're going to take that because that could be a really good uh, tool for us to carry a load of salt water back to our base for purification purposes. Or not purification, rather to cure those hides. And do we have anything over in the office here? Just a television, it looks like. Okay, and that's that. Let's hop that fence. Make sure that Elliot can do the same. Here he is. Okay, so we're not going to mark it as explored because I think there is still more to that, especially when it just comes to resources. Let's see what we've got going on in the factory. Or rather, not the factory, the warehouse that's here. It's locked. Okay, that's kind of a good sign. Um, we're not going to be able to just pry one of those, are we? Really need a proper crowbar. Yeah, and there's no way from that side. Okay, so we're just going to smash one of these windows then. And that's going to draw a little bit of attention our way. But it ain't nothing that we can't manage. And hey, hey, let's get some mind hammers going. Although, ah, uh, okay, we're going to have to let you get closer, aren't we? Yeah, all right then. You can try and spew on us if you want. And then we'll mind hammer you into pieces. The boomer explodes. So yeah, that's a, that's a lot of noise. Um, Elliot, oh, thank you, buddy. Appreciate that. Awesome. Let's, uh, let's go inside and turn on safe mode. Ah, uh, we're probably still gonna need to smash through some of these doors. That's okay. Let's just get our breath back first. Oh no, we're inside, so we can open them. And it looks like we have many crates here to look at. And it seems there is a chance that we can still find some things in them. So I'm just gonna go through the boxes first of all, just to see if we can find anything before we start popping open those crates. Ah, uh, bring the zombie, you've gotta go. Well, it's it's kind of just like assorted things. We'll take the Mexican cuisine book. Now we'll start to try and crack into these crates. It does look like we're getting things in each of them. Sushi made easy, yes please. Liverlicious recipes your kids will love. Got some sweatshirts, some alcohol wipes, sure. Fletcher's friend, which we might already have. We've definitely got someone moving around outside. An Italian cookbook. Seems to be the place for uh, cookbooks, really. Just a regular family cookbook, okay. Yeah, this is, this is like all cookbooks. <laughs> cookbooks and like cooking utensils. How intriguing. Well, <laughs> we did tired and this really hasn't amounted too much, but we did get a means to collect salt water and well, that is something that I wanted to do, but we still need to actually try and collect the stuff. So making our way towards there in the night is going to be well, it's not going to be a great idea to do while we are dead tired, but in saying that, as long as we're quiet, we can try and use the fog to our advantage. 
Well, first of all, I did want to stop by the radio tower. We've just managed to make it down here. I did try to use auto travel to make it on over towards here, but it wasn't able to pass through the trees. So you can still make use of the auto movement, this thing here, which does make it a little bit easier to move through a lot of foliage. And Elliot, he is still with us. Come on, clamber on over here and see what we've got. You know what, we could just put on some basic safety glasses because right now we don't actually have anything on our eyes at all. And I don't think it's gonna give us, what's well, this average encumbrance of five? It really shouldn't impede our vision. There's an RC car down here that's kind of interesting. Some malted milk balls, hell yeah. And of course, there is the radio tower itself, which we could just climb up to see if there's anything waiting for us up there. A good idea, I think. Oh, okay, um, just some twigs. Interesting, okay. Oh, and, and feathers, there's just a few nests, probably. And this is right at the very, very top. Okay, All right, don't jump off, Elliot. Well, I'd love to come up that during the day because that's gonna be, that's gonna give us a lot of sight. But for now, we are gonna try and see if we can get to one of these uh, swamp squares. It might be safer for us to go for something like this, where there isn't going to be as much of a swamp. Let's see if we can auto travel on over towards there. Now we are dead tired, so it's gonna be difficult and we are overburdened, but I don't think it's gonna cause us much pain. Okay, let's hold here for a little while, see if Elliot is still, <laughs> still by our side, excellent. I have just noticed something on the map here, a freaking portal. So let's stay away from that for now. But as you can see, with auto move on, we can just kind of glide through the trees here much easier. So murky shallow water, not looking for shallow, we're looking for salt. And there should be some salt water around here. We are on what we would figure to be the swamp tile. Oh, you could gather salt water from here. Okay, I, and here as well. Okay, so we've got lots of options for gathering. So let's pour into, oh, the keg actually has some items in it at the moment. So let's unload that keg. We put the malted milk balls in there. I don't know, I don't know why. Yeah, 50 liters. Yeah, that'll do. 200 salt water. Now that's gonna be heavy. It's actually not that heavy. Um, what I was gonna say was it's already in the lifting field. That's why. Okay. Yep. Aluminium keg <laughs> with salt water. Wonderful. Okay. That actually worked. And we just got our legs wet, didn't we? I don't think that's that bad. We can probably deal with the moist penalties. At the same time, though, we have a towel. Let's just use it. And now we are going to try and see if we can navigate our way back towards that farmhouse. I'm probably going to want to try and go straight onto the road first, though. So let's just give that a shot. And there we go. Bam, just like that. Elliot, hey, still with us. And we have made it back. Wonderful. Elliot, please don't come smashing through one of the windows. Just use the door. There we go. Okay, so we're going to need a bit of light to do all of this. Let's actually grab one of the chairs from here and we'll just drag it on down into the kitchen. So we've still got lots of candles. So we're just going to go and light one of those. And then let's look at curing some of those hides. Oh boy. Yep. We can do the lot. We can do all of them. Two hours and 33 minutes. I know it's going to make us really tired, but it's going to be worth it in the long run. That and of course Elliot should be able to help us with all of those. Okay, we are now exhausted at this stage. So we are going to be extinguishing that candle. Dusk, you've done a fantastic freaking job. There is still some more cooked meat here, so we're gonna go and knock that back right away. Of course, there is meat here that Elliot would be able to eat should he desire, but he hasn't been spending anywhere near as many calories as Dusk. So her staying on top of that is going to be worth it. We've only spent 711 so far today, but I think, I, th I still think we need, to le we need to eat a little bit more here. So before we go to sleep, we're not gonna have mutant fat, but we are going to have regular fat, and this is going to make us rather upset. But we do what we gotta do. That'll help you keep your strength dusk. And of course, we'll be knocking back some of these multivitamins as well to make sure that that early iron deficiency isn't going to be a problem. We've already lost it as an effect, so that's good. Well then, our first day here on the farm is done. Dusk and Elliot are going to have to rest for a long while. But with that keg, we can shoot out, we can get water, we can purify a whole load of that. I would love for Elliot to be able to master his purification seed. 
So we'll try and get him focusing on that one in the next. As for Dusk, she's going to be reading a lot and she'll be reading to Elliot as well. It's important that they both learn these skills for should the worst happen, one of them must be able to carry on. And yes, we have not barricaded the windows. That's probably a good start before anything else. So maybe we'll try and get Elliot set up reading, studying his spell scroll, and we'll let Dusk work on all that construction stuff. For now though, I ask you all, if you enjoyed today's episode, please consider leaving a comment or a like to let me know if you enjoyed the show. As for now, I have been Rykon, you have all been awesome, and until next time, stay.